What's going on guys and gals, my name's Sean, and if you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. Now, I don't know if you took my advice, went over and checked out old Trey's channel, because he just got hold of an Amazon guitar at my recommendation that he said wasn't very good. Now hang on just a dang minute, Sean. I was over at Trey's channel. That's not the same guitar that you looked at. Yeah, that's not the same guitar that I got for sure. His is just a little bit different. Mine wasn't a standard Strat. But he said the one he got is still a good guitar for 99 bucks. Just needed a few small things done to it. Now, I want to say this before we even get started. If you're somebody who can't do any type of guitar work, you're just looking for something to play, I don't know if you should steer clear of this yet or not. I need to look at it. And what I need to look at is this. It's another one of them Fogio guitars. Got a nice gig bag. Let's crack it open. Now, Trey already had this thing fooling with it. But, oh. Nice and glue. Looks like a roasted neck. Now, like I said, for some of you guys that can't do work on guitars, or you're too chicken to get out there and try, <laughs> you probably don't want to mess with this. But I don't know yet. But from first glance, for me, I don't care what's wrong with it. 99 bucks, it's probably a good deal. Now for me, at 99 bucks, that's a decent guitar because I'm going to be able to fix whatever's wrong with it. Now before we go saying anything's wrong with it, let's get it off that table and play it a little bit. I mean, it's got a little weight to it. We'll weigh it here in a minute. I like the look of this guitar. You don't usually see very many strats in this color. I think that's like a sonic blue. I love it. Yep, I like it a lot. Let's play it unplugged. It's really stiff to play. It's like... I don't know, it's like there's something on these strings keeping my fingers from wanting to slide around. Action's super high. But it's playing. I guess you could get it out of the box if this is how you got it and play it. Well, I guess it just goes to show you, just like you guys been telling me, it's kind of hit or miss, you know? Now, from what I can see, this thing don't have too many problems. But it ain't going to fix itself up. So that's going to be enough flip flapping. Let's make it happen. You guys know what it is. Let's get these old strings off of here. Well, we'll skip right to something else. Now, I watched Trey's video. Before we even get started, look. He said these things are poking out. Hitting him in his hand. Hurting him. So there's several causes for that to be like that. One of them could be a giant bow in the neck. You see the giant bow there? I mean, it has a giant bow in the neck. That is a lot of air under there. You see that? That razor blade goes right under there. <laughs> this is super easy to fix. All I'm going to do is put my truss rod wrench in there. I'm going to turn it back towards me. Yeah, it's looking a little better right there. We'll keep that right there. And because he said these saddles are so low, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this straight edge ruler right here Put it inside one of the string slots. I'm gonna set it down here in the string slot. And I'm gonna look at the clearance I have. Now that I've straightened the neck out pretty good, it looks pretty even all the way across the board. So no need for a shim. Trey said there were some high frets. Yep. Clacking off the rip. But not all the way across. See, that's why I do that. That's why I slide it all the way across. Because see, it's clacking there. But it's not here. Let's take the neck off to fool with the frets. Nice tight neck pocket. Whoa, look at that. Guys, you don't put that in the neck pocket. <laughs> These are really raised up where they just screwed them in there without. They build these quickly. I'm using a metal file to do this. 
Much better now. It's nice and flat. What's up with these weird radiuses? 16 inch, guys? 16. Now, I could have done this with a hammer, but I have a fret press, so I'm going to use it. Well, this ain't really a fret press. It's just a press that I rigged up to be a fret press. Help from my good friend, Bill Trexler. But I just saw those two go in good. Down there on the end there. Huh. So if they would have just pressed them in better. Yeah, those fret ends are super sharp. You see them? I mean, they're literally pointy. I'm just going to round it over really quickly. I'm not going to dig into the wood. I'm just going to use it against the metal. Take my time and do it slowly. You see that? Can you see how round that one is compared to the ones next to it? We're going to do that to all of them. Yep, nice rounded frets now. Well, let's move on. Let's see what else this guitar has. Now, these tuners feel smooth, but I've noticed some of the key heads are loose. We can tighten that up real quick. Not a big deal at all. Just go ahead and tighten them all. A loose tuner is a bad tuner. We're going to look under this pit guard. Trey said it sounded bad. And it did. It sounded horribly weak. Let's see what's under this bad boy. No shielding. Screw for the claw came up through the body, but that's okay. Now this thing had some horrible sounding pickups. It just really did. I'm anxious to see what one of them looks like. I don't know what that is in there. Wound very, very, very lightly. Yeah, there's plenty of room on that bobbin for a lot more wines, ain't there? Yeah, super small trim. Look how skinny that thing is. Wow. Dang, they skinnied them up even more. That was barely on there. I got one of the pickups out. I got it hooked up to the meter here. Let's see what it reads. No wonder it sounds terrible. <laughs> we got something to fix that. Boom. 50s modified Fender Stratocaster pickup set. These are on Amazon. I'll leave a link for them. Hard to get them out of there. Nice. Beautiful. Look at that. Can you see the difference in the wind on these two? Bobbins are the same size. Fender's fat. But I want to know what it's reading. Let's see. Yeah, that looks a little better. 605. Yeah, that's better. Man, I'm digging that already. <laughs> We'll go ahead and solder these guys right back where they were, one at a time, so we make sure we put them in the right place. Now, we know the mother ones suck, so no sense in checking them anymore. Checking these fender ones, and this is the middle one now. 639, pretty good. Let's tighten the rat nest up.
put her bridges back on for her. Pick that right up. Shoot, that even looks better to me. All right, the faux gel strat style sonic blue with the rosewood fretboard, the roasted maple neck, sonic blue. Man, this guy is sweet. Put some cream knobs on it, match a little better probably. But if you look, this just goes to show you what a little setup can do for you. You see the screws aren't poking out of the saddles now. That's because I adjusted the neck. Once I took that bow out, they needed to come up some. Well, let's hear what it sounds like unplugged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but does that matter if it sounds good unplugged? You guys tell me. But let's turn it up some. Sounds like a big fat strat to me. <laughs> Try the fourth position. Yeah, man, let's try the middle. Second position. What's my final thoughts on the Fogio? 99 bucks. Worth it all day. And if you can throw a little bit of extra into this thing, man, this is a killer guitar. Did you guys hear it? Yeah, a little quick and easy setup. About 45 minutes it took me to do all that stuff. Killer set of new pickups in there. And I mean, man, that's a monster strat right there. Yeah, you could gig that guitar right now. Don't even have to worry about breaking it. Don't have to worry about somebody kicking it off the stand or stealing it. Yeah. Pretty cheap budget guitar, but monster sound, killer playing guitar. Now I just want to tell you guys, me and Kathy really appreciate you watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. But until I do see you again, don't you touch my scar guitar.